How are our conversions valid? We are sometimes asked questions such as, How are your conversions valid despite your belief in Yeshua? Or, What makes them halakhically valid? To answer these questions, we must first establish our halakhic approach. Halakha is a Hebrew word that is derived from the verb to walk. Halakha, therefore, can be defined as the ways Jews walk. At B'nai Avraham, we are halakhic purists, as are the Orthodox rabbis who guide us. This means that our halakha is based primarily on the Mishnah. The Mishnah is the main text of the Talmud. The Talmud comprises of both the Mishnah and the Gemara. The Mishnah is the writings of the Tanaim. They were the last rabbinic sages of Israel that sat on the Beit Din Hagadol, the great court, a.k.a. the Sanhedrin. Our courts were given authority by the Torah to interpret and judge and direct Israel in the ways of Torah. The Gemara is a commentary on the Mishnah by the Amoraim. The words of the Amoraim in the Gemara help us interpret the Mishnah, but are not authoritative, as they were not actual judges in the great court. The requirements of conversion, according to the Talmud, are simple and come from Keritot 9a 4, as follows. The Barita continues, Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi says, The offering of a convert is derived from the verse, as you are, so shall the stranger be. Numbers 15, verse 15. Which means, as your ancestors were, just as your ancestors entered the covenant only through circumcision and immersion in a ritual bath and the sprinkling of blood on the altar, so too they may enter the covenant only through circumcision and immersion and the sprinkling of some blood, which requires at least a bird offering. Although the passage is about one who lacks atonement, it describes the minimum requirements to be a convert. They are circumcision and immersion in a ritual bath. The convert is afterwards required to bring an offering in order to receive atonement. However, without the temple functional at this present time, we do not require this until the third temple is rebuilt. The Amoraim also taught that a proper conversion should be done by a bet din or rabbinical court composed of three Jewish males above the age of 13. They do not need to be rabbis, but Torah observant. Two Jewish males is actually sufficient for a bet din, but not ideal nor recommended. Three is best. However, remember that the Tanaim did not mention the requirement of a bet din, and other passages show that a conversion done without one is not necessarily invalid. Without the presence of a Beit Din during conversion, it does not mean that one who undergoes circumcision and immersion is not a valid convert. And we are supposed to take people at their word if they say they are Jewish and they converted. However, when it comes to marriage with another Jew, if there is doubt, one may be required to do a Gir Lechumra, or a conversion for strictness sake. The gir the humra does not mean that the person going through it is not a true convert. On the contrary, it means that he is indeed a Jew, but that his conversion was possibly not done properly, and is therefore being repeated in the presence of a bet din witnessing it, to ensure that it is done correctly this time. Another important point from the Talmud, Yevamot 47a Thirteen through forty-seven B three is that converts do not need to know Jewish law thoroughly; they should be informed of the hardships of the Jewish people, and then informed of some of the easy and difficult mitzvot. Forty-seven A, with regard to a potential convert who comes to a court in order to convert, at the present time, when the Jews are in exile, the judges of the court say to him. What did you see that motivated you to come to convert? Don't you know that the Jewish people at the present time are anguished, suppressed, despised, and harassed, and hardships are frequently visited upon them? If he says, I know, and although I am unworthy of joining the Jewish people and sharing in their sorrow, 
I nevertheless desire to do so. Then the court accepts him immediately to begin the conversion process. And the judges of the court inform him of some of the lenient mitzvot and some of the stringent mitzvot, and they inform him of the sin of neglecting the mitzvah to allow the poor to take gleanings, forgotten sheaves, and produce in the corner of one's field, and about the poor man's tithe. And they inform him of the punishment for transgressing the mitzvot, as follows. They say to him, Be aware that before you came to this status and converted, had you eaten forbidden fat, you would not be punished by karet, and had you profaned Shabbat, you would not be punished by stoning, since these prohibitions do not apply to Gentiles. But now, once converted, if you have eaten forbidden fat, you are punished by karet, and if you have profaned Shabbat, you are punished by stoning. And just as they inform him about the punishment for transgressing the mitzvot, so too they inform him about the reward granted for fulfilling them. They say to him, Be aware that the world to come is made only for the righteous, and if you observe the mitzvot, you will merit it. And be aware that the Jewish people at the present time are unable to receive their full reward in this world. They are not able to receive either an abundance of good nor an abundance of calamities, since the primary place for reward and punishment is in the world to come. And they do not overwhelm him with threats, and they are not exacting with him about the details of the mitzvot. If he accepts upon himself all of these ramifications, then they circumcise him immediately. If there still remain on him shreds of flesh from the foreskin that invalidate the circumcision, they circumcise him again a second time to remove them. When he is healed from the circumcision, they immerse him immediately and two Torah scholars stand over him at the time of his immersion and inform him of some of the lenient mitzvot and some of the stringent mitzvot. Once he has immersed and emerged, he is like a born Jew in every sense. For the immersion of a woman. Women appointed by the court seat her in the water of the ritual bath up to her neck, and two Torah scholars stand outside the bathhouse so as not to compromise her modesty and from there they inform her of some of the lenient mitzvot and some of the stringent mitzvot. In summary, the halakha according to Talmud is, men should be circumcised, or hatafat dambrit if already circumcised. Before immersion, the convert is to be told about the hardships of being a Jew, instructed on a few simple mitzvot and a few hard ones. The convert-to-be should not be overwhelmed with threats, nor should the Beit Din be exacting on him regarding knowledge of the mitzvot. The convert-to-be should be told of the general rewards and punishments for obeying or breaking the mitzvot. After the convert-to-be agrees with the statements above and accepts the covenant of Torah, immersion should be performed. All the above should be witnessed by two to three observant Jewish men over bar mitzvah age, students of Torah. This is a halakha of conversion, and this is what we follow at B'nai Avraham. Our conversions are valid because we adhere to these halakhot as outlined in the Talmud. In future lessons, we will cover why the way we understand, follow, and relate to Yeshua is still within the confines of halakhic and Talmudic Judaism. Do you feel Hashem calling you to Torah? Does your spirit wish to walk in the Torah covenant and become one with Israel as a Jew? If your answer is yes, we invite you to make that commitment, as our ancestors did at Sinai. Learn more at b'nai